Welcome to episode 100 of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And this is the review show that reviews comics chronologically, kind of, if something bangs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody falls oh, out a flight of steps. <laughs> it's, the cats are pissed because you didn't introduce them. That's what it was. <laughs> they can introduce now themselves at this point point. Well, they did. You know, that was the bang you heard. Was the cats you know, when I, when I talk to Lumpy and you're not here, TJ, them cats don't make a sound. It's your voice. I think it's your voice that starts them up. Uh, it might be that hello. Because yes, they didn't hello. do anything until you no, did they, that. They get all excited. They get all excited when TJ does hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, and then they start running yeah. around. <laughs> Whatever. So this is our 100th episode. Woohoo! Uh, big and, celebration. Yeah, as... We talk about a comic book <laughs> as normal, <laughs> except we're not. It's this is it's still a Batman comic, but we're not doing a traditional detective comics or Batman comics. We're moving away from nineteen forty four or forty. Yeah. yeah, I think we're in forty four right now. I think we're going to get out of the forties for a day. I, I'll tell you that. Jeez, as we're jumping to nineteen eighty eight to re- read one of the most prolific Batman stories in the Killing Joke. It was either this or The Dark Knight Returns, but I hate that story, so we're going with the one I like. I like Dark Knight Returns. I, I, that's a miserable, terrible story. I hate it. <laughs> I don't know that one. It's the other most prolific Batman book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> TJ's going to get a lot of shit for that, but I do like yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's garbage, though. It's garbage. Yeah. I hate that it's story. Not, I like it, but <laughs> we, we disagree on a lot of things, but that's okay. Yeah, no. That one's garbage. <laughs> anyway, The Killing Joke was a re- released July 1988. However, it's been really re-released 17 times. So, really 17 wow. times? I don't know if that was that was an exaggeration. Oh, I thought you really had the number oh. sitting there. <laughs> no. Well, it's been at least 5. It's 1 yeah. 2 3 4 5 6 times according to this list here. Okay. I was going to say cuz I know I've seen 5 versions of it and I actually read the original black and white version. And that's not the original black and white version. The original was colored. It's the black and white version is the noir version. The noir version uh, was released August 2016. Oh, so that trade paperback was the first. Yes, the original. The 1988. There was also uh, another version released in January 2006. A deluxe re- edition released in 2008. Uh, another version of it called Absolutely Batman in September 2018. And then... A black labeled Joker Deluxe Edition in September 2019, which is what I actually own as a physical copy because I own a physical copy of this book. Hmm. So there's it's it's a released a lot of times. <laughs> the story was written by Alan Moore, who also did Watchmen and stuff like that. For all of you who don't know it, he also well known for hating his work. So <laughs> this is no exception. He hated uh, his own work. Yeah, he says the story is about nothing because Batman and Joker aren't real people or whatever. So the story is bad or whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever. He's he's a character. So, but it was penciled and inked by Brian Boland. It was colored by John Hingins. It was lettered by Richard Starkins and edited by Dennis O'Neill and Dan Raspier. The original cover. Artist was Brian Bullen and Richard Brunin, but since there's like six covers over the course of the other, of, over the whole thing, that I'll have all those credits in front of me. Just assume I think Brian Bullen did a few of them, probably all of them, since he used the original cover artist. But I'm not sure about that. The executive editor on this was also Dick Giordano, and yeah, that's it for the credits. I'm deciding whether or not I should jump into the story or go into some... Nah, let's jump into, into the cover. Who wants to t- take the cover? Which cover? The, the the camera cover first? Yeah, do the camera cover first. Okay, I'll do the camera cover. Um, We got the Joker. He's got like a piff helmet on his head. He's got a camera in his hand. Purple gloves. Camera turned sideways. He's snapping a picture and he says, smile. On my copy of this, I have the deluxe version. It says, I love the killing joke. It's my favorite. It's the first comic I ever loved by Tim Burton. And it's I got, actually you know, love that. What, Tim Burton? Yeah, I like Tim yeah. Burton. So I thought it was cool. I like the way it's oh. drawn. I like the, his hair's wavy, like the green hair's wavy. And um, he's smiling behind the camera. And he's got uh, very like pointy teeth behind. It looks good. It's a very good drawing. So, 
I have <laughs> the, the newest version of the deluxe edition, which ex- okay. is exactly the same cover as this, except it's close. It's a closer up view on the camera and the Joker's teeth. Like, oh, really? It, yeah, it's, so it, you it, can't see his hair or that helmet thing. Yeah, that you're oh. describing like on ours. It almost looks like an that. old lady hat. Like it almost looks like yeah. he's got an Easter bonnet on or something. But I think it's supposed to be like a safari hat, like a piff helmet. Yeah, we just don't have it on ours. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess that's that cover. Want to move on to the next cover? (laughs) Who wants to do the next cover? (laughs) Sure. Um, Uh, 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 I'm trying, (laughs) but while we were talking, I hit a button and I lost it. So, uh, TJ, which version of the next cover do you want to cover? So, here's what I'll do. I'll do both. You ready? Yeah. Because the, the other one is simple. Uncle Chris is... His is a fully black page. There's nothing else on it except two eyeballs with blood dripping from them. And in gray, it says Batman, the killing joke, the deluxe edition. Yes. In ours, <laughs> let me get it. I had it saved so I could do both. In ours, it is actually the Joker. Doing it by memory while I wait for this to load. Okay. So in the other one, wait a minute, TJ. You, am I covering the one where it's just a piece of his camera? I mean, you can. <laughs> You're already talking about it, so. <laughs> so in, in the deluxe edition, it is a close-up of the Joker's camera and his hand and sleeve. It is a very detailed drawing, but it is literally nothing but a close-up of the camera, his purple glove, and his purple sleeve. With a black background, and it says Batman the Killing Joke, the deluxe edition. And then... All right, Uncle Chris, <laughs> tell us about the green cover. All right, we got to... Oh, uh, yeah. I don't have that one. <laughs> the hardback, um, after you take the dust sleeve off, has a cover on it, but it's like fluorescent green, and it's Batman choking the Joker, and there's a bunch of ha-ha-has, and then I, like a scream at the bottom, it says E. And on the back of that, it's um, it's a card, and it's a Jack, on, I mean, a Joker on the top. It actually looks like a Jack of Clubs, and it's got the Joker's picture, and if you flip the card over, it's a B of Clubs, and it's Batman. I don't know why it would be a B of Clubs. That's weird, but... <laughs> All right, and then both comics have this next one. So, who wants to talk about this? The next part. So, Lumpy, talk about the next one. So, this is oh. where the bleeding eyes come. I from. see it. I see it now. I see. I didn't know that that was part of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's what, but that's why I covered the other one because from yours they just took those bleeding eyes and put them on right. a black background. Well, but I do this have that. one. I have this one too. Oh, you have this one too. Yeah. Huh. So I'm I'm trying to figure out actually. It's it looks like he's wet. It's it's a picture of the Joker with his hands in his hair and his face looking absolutely crazy, creepy, crazy, yeah. with blood coming out of his eyes and his makeup is starting to drip a little. So it actually kind of looks like blood dripping from his lip. His teeth are sharp. His chin is very pointed. It's well, very well drawn. His gloves are white. He's in a suit and tie, bow tie. But uh, I can't tell if his if it's just like supposed to be drippy or if he's wet. No, like because from his rich. gloves and his chin, there's it's, like it's definitely wet. I just don't know if this is after he comes out of the sewage drain in the origin, uh, or or okay. if this is at the end where they're in the rain. Oh, uh, right. Either way, he's he's wet from something. It's a great. Classic picture of Crazy Joker, though. It really is. It looks, he looks it really, really good. It really is. Yeah. This is one of the best. I think this might be one of my favorite Joker pictures, actually. Uh, this, what we're talking about right now, is actually the credits page, which is like the second page in oh, is the that comic. Is? Yeah. And then after that's the table of contents. We don't need to talk about that. And then there's an introduction from Tim Sale in the deluxe edition that I'm reading. We're going to skip that and we're going <laughs> to jump right into the story. It is raining in Gotham. And Batman shows up to Arkham Asylum. Gordon's there with a cops, and he's directed to the Joker's cell, passing Harvey Dent, Two Face, and an unknown name, 0801. I'm not sure what that's a reference to, honestly. And he doesn't look like he has a head, that unknown name. It's just a light. It's just a light. Oh, it's just a light. Got it. Uh, So Batman is taken into a cell. Where the Joker is playing solitaire with Joker in his deck. And he's just playing solitaire, and Batman sits down across from him, and he starts talking to the Joker. He's He wants to settle, try to talk to him so 
and try to settle it with words before they essentially kill each other. So, so he about ba- before you get to that, if this says name unknown is the Joker cell, and 0801 is actually a code in numerology that spells out ha H A. Oh, so I oh guess maybe that's... maybe maybe that was a s- cell, and I don't know. This is because he's in a cell. I don't know. Well, that, the, he, the door says name unknown, and it looks like they might open that door. No, because, yeah, you're right. They go to another door with keys. Yeah, they walk past it. Or maybe that's the guy waiting outside as Batman. Oh, it's Batman's approaching that cell. I see. Yeah. So the, okay. they don't know the Joker's name. It just says name unknown, and 0801 is is, yeah. is neurology code that spells out ha. So Right, you gotcha, because they don't actually know his real name. Right. They don't want to put the... But, uh, yeah, they put Harvey Dent, so... All right, so yeah, so Batman's trying to talk to the Joker and try to settle this with words. So because he says it's going to eventually come down to me killing you or you killing me, and he wants to at least put in the effort to have to at least try. And then with the, when the Joker doesn't speak, he grabs his hand and he sees white makeup on his hand. Batman does, and he figures out that's not the Joker sitting across the room for a moment. That's someone else. Because the Joker puts makeup on to hide that white, not to make it white. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So, Batman gets angry and starts beating him up. Gordon and the cop rush in and say, you can't beat up the Joker. You know how this thing is. And then he he hands him his the green wig and says, this is not the Joker. (laughs) Anything to say before we go further? Nope. You guys are really quiet today. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) No, I'm still looking up that. (laughs) Actually, you you were covering really fast. You, like, ended up, like, a page down on me, so then I was like, wait, I missed where the wig was, so I was just a little lost. Oh, well, the problem is, the first three pages is just Batman walking. It's really yeah, no there's dialogue nothing. or there's nothing. There's no yeah, words. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like, I could go panel by panel, show, talking about how the cops standing outside the cell, and then Batman walking to the cops, but there's nothing happening, and so... No, it was good, it was just, you covered him grabbing his hand, and then the next thing I knew, you were... Saying about the wig, and I'm like, wait, I'm wait. He grabs his face first, right? Anyway, and he smear anyway. But you covered it. It just, I just got lost. That's all. <laughs> all right, are we all cut <laughs> up now. We're good. Yes. All right. So we cut over to an abandoned amusement park where this guy is talking to the Joker, and he asks him, he asks the Joker if he likes the place, and the Joker says, starts listing all the things that, that are bad about it, and then says. He loves it. He's crazy for it, and that he's going to buy it from this guy, and and that's essentially that scene. So <laughs> yeah. And as he's um, talking to the guy, he through, through the dialogue, it transitions to the Joker's one of Joker's possible backstories. Let's say that. Right. Yeah, because like when we first started, Lumpy said I, it's Joker's backstory, but um, he pretty much says that it's one of the backstories that he remembers because he's yeah, just yeah he says that in this comic so. yeah yeah that's what he says yeah because he's loony so he doesn't know right so we cut over to, we cut to years past and this in my version it's black and white with some color yes <laughs> that's right and too. the the joker is just some guy do they give him a name I was wondering that after you said about him not having a name. And he calls uh, him Baby. Uh, oh, Baby. I don't see any names here. Yeah, I don't think they give him a name. No, I don't think they actually give him a name either. All right. So, past Joker has coming home from work to uh, his pre- pretty much his pre- pregnant wife. He lives in a shitty apartment. And he had, they tell this later, but he had quit his job to become a comedian. And it's not really, he's not doing so well. No one's laughing at his jokes. And he's not really getting paid much. And he kind of snaps at his wife when she mentions a word. And then breaks down, apologizing to her for, you know, essentially he's upset that he's such a loser that even the landlady thinks he's a loser and the only reason why they're still in their place is because the landlady feels bad for the pregnant woman the landlady's creepy too she's down at the bottom steps holding her cat dressed like a little girl with like (laughs) i was gonna say (laughs) the creepy dress and pink bow in her hair made it like she has wrinkles on her face and stuff but they her carrying the creepy cat too they yeah the cat looks like it might only have one eye yeah Mrs. Burkus. Mrs. Burkus is pretty creepy. Burkus. So the Joker is uh, worried about the baby coming. He just wants enough money to move into a decent neighborhood. And he's apologizing to the wife. And the wife says he's 
she's okay with how things are, and she he still makes her laugh, and you know. Yeah, but the, wait, <laughs> you skipped over the part where she says, "Don't worry about it. I still love you. You know, job or no job, you're still good in the sack." <laughs> yeah, I was kind of going to leave that part out, but whatever. <laughs> no, that that is put in there for a reason. Like they they they're making it. It's, yeah. it's odd. It's really odd. Yeah, I mean, and the scene where um. Then that scene, she's reaching out to grab the Joker's hand, and then we transition to the, back to the present where the Joker's reaching out to one of those like fortune teller machines in in the yeah, box, it's except a, it's, except it's a clown this time. I don't know. I get the feel maybe it's one of those things that like poops out an egg. You know what I mean? Like you put a quarter yeah. in it and it laughs. I'll be honest. I kind of thought that it was a poster, but now I see at the bottom that it says. Yeah, no, no, it's a it's definitely it's a machine. I don't no, know if you would yeah. a prize. Or you put a quarter a... in it and it laughs. Yeah, yeah, and then I think a little mm. prize will come out the bottom, don't you think? No, I don't think so. So you just put a quarter in to make it laugh. Well, it's a penny, but yeah, well, it's a penny there, but. <laughs> so I think it's just one of those things, one of those old timey things that it was just there for show, you know? Right. Anyway. Back in the present, the Joker's still talking to the guy who's selling on the place, and the Joker informs him he's he's gonna he's gonna take the place, but he's already had his associate talk to his the guy's partner to get the deeds and stuff, so he's not gonna give this guy any money as he shakes his hand. Wait, and does it, he shake his hand or he pats him on the back, I think. No, so he's taking his hand down there. Oh, it's down there, okay. Yeah. You forgot to mention that the guy's riding a pink elephant, by the way. Yes. <laughs> He's showing them how sturdy the rides still are by oh, jumping okay. on the pink elephant. Do you want me to get through this or not? <laughs> Listen, I, uh, these are details that I like to talk about. There's a pink elephant I just, there. I'm just saying, <laughs> and it's not important to the story of him read, riding the pink elephant a it ride. Is. It is. It's very important. <laughs> anyway, Joker shakes his hand, and it's revealed he's got a needle on it. And as he walks away, it's also revealed that he just killed that guy as he is, I guess, was infected with Joker serum. That's what it looks like, yeah, because the guy's got a big, huge smile on his face and blood running out of his mouth. So, and so Joker owns this abandoned amusement park. Yeah. And he didn't need to murder that guy. Because yeah, I mean, he, already, he already duped him out of his money. I mean, he's the Joker. Yeah, he basically <laughs> yeah. says that. Yeah. I mean, what, if, what did you expect? He's already like, I already own this, but look, I'm going to murder look, you anyway. Look, look, I'm just going to put the sentence out there to you. The guy is alone in an abandoned music park with the Joker. <laughs> True. He, he kind of deserves it. You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Like, I mean, I don't know if he deserved it, but he knew it was coming. Yeah, he should have known it was coming anyway. <laughs> All right, moving on to the Batcave. Uh, Batman's playing with a Joker card as we take a look at a picture of the Bat family at that time. Yeah, please don't skip that. Who is in that picture? Okay. Dude, it's... <laughs> I see Batgirl. I think I see Batwoman. Yeah, it's a Batgirl, Batwoman, Robin, Alfred, Batman. I'm not sure who the blonde guy... Maybe it's Gordon? Yeah, maybe it's it Gordon. It might be. I'm not sure who the blonde guy with glasses is. But that's also Batmite up in the corner. It is Batmite. I thought it was. Yeah, Batmite. And then and Alfred. is the dog a name? Uh, yeah, the dog does have a name. Bathound. <laughs> Batman, okay. Batman still has that dog in um what, the one where he's teaching. Uh, Batman uh, Beyond. Yeah, Batman Beyond. Him and the dog are both oh. Yeah. That dog's been around forever. <laughs> See, we haven't gotten to the dog in our, no, in our timeline. And his name's yet. not just Batham, TJ. His name is Ace. The bad Yeah, I know. It's Ace. It's Ace the Bad Hound. <laughs> but I didn't want to ruin his secret identity. Oh, sorry. Damn it. <laughs> Cut it out. Cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we get a, another look at the Batcave. You know, the Penny's there, the T-Rex is there, giant computers and stuff like that. Batman types in the Jokers for Joker's files, and he's reading the Joker's files as he would. And then Alfred comes down with food and tea. Tea and crumpets. A really weird looking Alfred. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of standard for this day and age, that Alfred. Yeah, it's a well, Alfred. That's what I was ge- well, that's what I was getting at. From where, yeah. where I know Alfred, this, he looks really weird here right <laughs> well, now. Well, where so. we know Alfred, he just pre- pretty recently got went on a crash diet because he was a heavy guy and now he's a skinny guy like that. But he doesn't look yes. like that. But he doesn't look anything like that. Nah. Now, mm-hmm. this Batman's pretty buff, huh? This Batman yes. works out a lot more than our Batman does. <laughs> A lot more. <laughs> That's sure too. <laughs> anyway, so Batman's talking to Alfred, and he's like, 
He's talking about the pretty much all the crap him and the Joker have been through and how he's always just waiting for the Joker to do something bad every time he escapes. Well, that's what he was doing in the jail. I don't know if we if you mentioned it. He's talking about how they need to stop because they're, they're I just completely kill lost you. Do you hear yeah. me now? Yeah. I just, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you now. I caught the end of the sentence. Okay. We, yeah, yeah we, you, we lost you, though. He, he's saying we that were... um, they're just going to kill each other if they keep this up. That's what he's been saying through the whole thing. Yeah, I mentioned that. Okay. I was busy I... Uh, looking up what that number was on the thing at that time, I think. <laughs> That's my <laughs> <right>. problem. <laughs> so we're cu- we cut over to Commissioner Gordon's house, where he's pretty much scrapbooking. Yeah, he is. Yes, he's definitely it's exactly what he's doing. Now, love. Uh, since you didn't read on to Batman, so you started with us in 1940, do you know uh, Barbara Gordon here at all? Do you know what she is? Nope. <laughs> That's funny. Not a clue. No, nothing about her at all. You want to tell him, TJ? <laughs> Barbara Gordon is Batgirl. Huh. She's, okay. She's the original yeah. Batgirl. But until now, because there's a problem in this in this comic where... She's not bad. Oh, I'm going to have to get into that once we get past yeah, that. Uh, that. Yeah, I think that's not exactly <laughs> canon, right? It, yeah, it can't be if that if that's what you're saying. But anyway, we'll get there. <laughs> uh, so, here we go. This is where it starts. Uh, Gordon scrapbooking and Barbara comes in with tea. And they're just, you know, talking about, you know, stuff. It's not really important. Like, pretty much Batman and... He's Gordon scrapbooking about Batman, Batman's accomplishments, and he's looking at past achievements, and they're talking about um, something. I'm <laughs> scanning as I'm doing it, honestly. And it's not working. It doesn't matter. It, essentially, there's a knock at the door, and Barbara thinks it's her friend, and when she opens the door, it's the Joker with two goons with a gun. He's dressed in like a Hawaiian shirt, and he has a camera. He points the gun at Barbara, shoots her in the... Where would you say that is? Like, the waist? So, I'm going to call it her plexus. abdomen. Yeah, like, it's her lower abdomen <laughs> where he yeah. shoots her in this. It's almost in the vagina is where he shoots her. It's That's close. Yeah, it's really it's close. close. Yeah, well, he shoots her, and she falls through a table, a glass table, broken up, and then... Gordon's taken by surprise. Joker comes in, pours himself a drink. Gordon looks like he's going to come at Joker with a pair of scissors. But he's beaten up by by a couple of guard by the two goons, and he's dragged out of there. And then the Joker proceeds to take off Barbara's shirt. He has a camera in his hand, and then we cut to the past. I'll get back to that in a moment. Let me. Okay, I was going to say, when are you going to get into that? Because I want to hear what I, you got to say. I want to. <laughs> I want to get past the hospital scene. Okay. All right. So going back to the Joker's origin, kind of. I use origin in quotation marks. Yeah, there's many. Yeah, because it's weird. In this, they call it the Joker's origin. So he's talking to a couple of guys, and this is where we learned that he quit his job to become a comedian. But he used to work at, I believe it's Ace Chemicals. I believe that's where it was. Anyway, it's it's a chemical place, and these guys want him to lead one want him to lead him. Wait, want him to lead, lead them. them. <laughs> yeah. Through the chemical plant because they want to get to the place next door, and he knows the way through. And there's apparently no guards, and he's go- kind of doesn't want to do it, but he needs the money because of his wife and stuff. And they say he's going to be wearing this red hood. Um, yeah, they're trying to get into the playing card company next door. Yes, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a, a plot right out of the forties. So we should be. Using yeah, that. yeah, it's true. <laughs> You're true. You're right. You're exactly right. Let's get into the. The Silk Factory. For what? What are we doing this for? Or what are you going to the playing card <laughs> store for? Yeah. Anyway, and they're like, they have the whole, whole long conversation about it, and they convince them, and they're going to break into it in two days' time at midnight or something like that. So, okay. back, back to so the wait, present. Wait. Now, before you move on, do you have any idea why they are graphically eating shrimp? Like, it is they're feeding it to each other. The shrimp is the only thing that's a color in this in this whole scene, except for the red hood. <laughs> and it's like yeah. full on graphic, like ripping the legs off the shrimp. Everyone's got its own little sound. It's crazy. They don't talk about it. never, never say anything about it. Nope. I think the shrimp are there to accentuate the fact that they're showing us the red hood for the first time. Oh. Uh. Because the Red Hood is, at the time, there was a gang called the Red Hood Gang, and 
which they are. I, what I took is these guys are the Red Hood gang, and they just put this Red Hood on a bunch of people, so they that person takes the fall for it. They try to get the blame. That's what I got out of it. Too. Right, right, right. And this is actually based on a. Um, hold on, let me bring it up. Do, 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 do. Talk about yourselves. TJ's bringing stuff up. <laughs> no, but it, it, everyone has its own sound effect and everything. It was actually kind of gross. Where, yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, part. they were pretty detailed in the, um, like, the little pinchers and all the little t- tentacles. Right. Yeah. And it feels like they're ripping each leg off one by one. <laughs> yeah, so th- this this was, uh, a this part of, is loosely adapted from the 1951 story arc, The Man Behind the Red Hood by Bill Finger. Oh, wow. So, so we'll have to bring that up when we get to it 20 years from now. Yeah, so that's that's why I didn't really want to go into it because we're going to cover it eventually. <laughs> eventually, but you know, it's ni- it's only 1951, and we're we're getting closer to that with each time we you know cover a comic. So <laughs> since we're in 1944 right now, right? All right, so I gotta bring up the comic again. So yeah, so we cut back to the present where the doctors are looking at Barbara. Examining her. Uh, I'm assuming this is Harvey Bullock, but I don't think they mention him by name. Hmm. The cop. I would say they don't. I'm pretty sure that's Harvey. That's Gordon's like main partner and guy who's yeah, he really looks stu- like Bullock. So, and, and wasn't and, Bullock always smoking a cigar too? I think it is. Yeah, he's always eating and stuff like that. Yeah. And we learned that there's something rolling in the background. Oh, there's definitely something going on over there. So I think that's lose? the dogs upstairs. Wow. Yeah. We're getting all the all the sound effects today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we learned that Barbara's been paralyzed. She can't move from the leg down. She's probably going to be in a wheelchair chair for the for the rest of her life. And um, Batman asks for a moment alone, and they leave him in there with Barbara. She wakes up and tells him that it's Joker. He's different this time. He's lost his mind. He's trying to make uh, her dad go insane. Yes. <laughs> I'm just distracted by all the noise in the background. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, that's my heater just turned off. Yeah. All right. You're getting everything. This is what you listen. Yeah. Oh, you back whatever, you, whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever microphone you're using this time is very, it's like HD. We're hearing every, every drop, every, every <laughs> little noise. <laughs> Same exact one I always use. Really? That's weird. That's yep. really weird. Same exact, no difference. Like, are you moving are you, right now? All right. Are you not hearing no. that? No, now there's a cat right behind the monitor with a, um, <laughs> looks like she's got a magnet. She's batting around. Yeah, because I could hear it. It's they're very distracted. <laughs> Take the magnet and throw it across the room. <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing. There's a cat on my lap who's normally really loud. If I get up to move the uh, other cat, yeah, then I'm going to disturb this cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Better? Is that better, TJ? <laughs> it was just very distracting because it's very loud. <laughs> it was louder this time than usual. It's because she was doing it literally. What it is is at the base of my microphone because I have it up on a stand. Mm. So it batted the thing over and then it was literally trying to get it out. It was stuck on the legs of the microphone. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. So, yeah, Barbara wakes up and she's like pretty much saying the Joker is pretty much going even more insane than he normally is. Yeah. All right. Now we can talk about this. What did you want to know, Uncle Chris? Is there something specific? Is you this know? is this her final walking comic book? Like, is this canon? All right, so it's complicated. Okay, because because it wasn't it wasn't originally supposed to be canon. Oh, I got you. But this the story became story. the story became so popular and so much that they made it canon. Right. Okay. And this is what caused her to become Oracle. Oracle, right. That's She's in a wheelchair now, and she's Oracle. Right. Now, so yeah, she's Oracle. But then when they did the, the New 52 reboot in 2013, yeah. they put a chip on her spine, and she can walk again. Okay. I thought the New 52 started all the cannon back over again. It did. So how did she get... Is it, did they because, just come right back because and redo this? The New 52 pretty much was... All the heroes start five years into the hero's stories, oh, except for except for Batman, which they started ten years in, got which you. means some of the stuff stayed and some of it didn't. 
Right. Okay. So, but so <laughs> she could walk in with Batgirl again in the new 52, but as recently as I want to say three years ago, she, um, she got into another altercation with Joker, which messed up her spine again. Now she can she can still w- walk and stuff, but she's kind of re- retired Batgirl and has become more Oracle than Batgirl now. Okay. Again. Right. But she's not, like, completely paralyzed like she was. Only getting, like, little tidbits of the New 52, which I haven't read any of, I... it, it Like, it's confusing. It gets a little confusing. And most of it's garbage. Most of the New 52 stuff is garbage. Let's stop saying things are garbage. That, when's you that piss people off. No, when's the, the New 52? When, that's what year that's, that that's 2013. Out? Oh. But yeah. we're never getting there. So, But here's the thing. I'm not in the minority with this one. Everyone really? thinks the New 52 is garbage. Oh, okay. Except okay. for the Batman stories. Oh. The Batman right. stories were actually pretty decent in the New 52 run. So hmm. there's that. But most of it was it was really bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Now that explains the canonicity of what happened. What, with... what was your made up word? Canonical. Can- canonical. Yeah, that's TJ word. <laughs> he just said canicity this time. I don't know if that's a word either. But... <laughs> it is now. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that takes part of character canon things. Now this story got a lot of backlash for its treatment of. Barbara Gordon in this. Oh. Because, you know, they pretty much fridged her. We've talked about fridging before. Do you know what that is? Do you need me to explain it again? I think I think maybe you should. For the audience. Yeah, because I don't remember. <laughs> well, in 1994, Green Lantern and Kyle Rayner had a girlfriend. They killed her off, and he found her in a refrigerator. Ah. But her death meant nothing to her character. It was just a, a, to move Kyle Rayner's story along. Okay. You know what I mean? So they pretty so they pretty much hurt Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, but the story has nothing to do with her. It they're just like we're we're hurting this we're hurting this character and it has nothing to do with her. She's not essentially she's a plot point. Her 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 pain, her suffering is just a plot right. point. We don't care about her. It just is about her this. life is just a plot point and that's it. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. Yes. And in fact the the oracle stuff wasn't even the oracle stuff wasn't even like planned that was there was the writer Gal Simone the prolific writer in DC actually rehabbed the character into oracle fixing that but this was a cynical take on female characters in the 80s in fact um like when they weren't for permission to ask them like the producer or something said I don't care kill the bitch if you want <laughs> That's how that's bad. So it was like yeah. it's poor treatment of female characters, and like you know, it's, it's that was prolific in that in the eighties and nineties and stuff like that. Even further back, of course, but you know right. how female characters were treated, and this was just a very egregious example of it. Gotcha. So, hmm. so basically, what happens to her here is part of Batman's story, but does not actually affect the character in her own story. Well, not in this. Not in this particular story. Particular story, right? But if it, they 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 turn it into something eventually, right? Eventually, like, it does. But yeah, yeah, they yeah. people who cared about the character rehab the character. But in this story, like she, we never see Barbara Gordon again. She doesn't get revenge. Doesn't uh, she's just paralyzed now? Who cares? Move on, on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's not a good interpret uh, interpretation of it. Honestly, it's a bad it's a bad look for the story for an otherwise good story. I mean, unless they considered her a minor character at the time. I mean, the guys probably did. But she was a major character because she was Batgirl, too. So I don't And know. she's Jim Gordon's daughter. <laughs> right, right. But they kill people's daughters off all the time. Kind of sons, daughters, mothers, fathers. Yeah, but she's been around long enough at that point that... Right, she has she's... established a character. She is a, you know, she's a major character. She's a major character. She was in the um, TV show and stuff, so... Right, she's right. she has th- another thing. Oh, the thing. Now, all right, I'll, I'll 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 wait on to the next part of the Barbara Gordon stuff in a moment. Okay. <laughs> as as we go back to the story now. So we cut from Barbara waking up in the hospital and talking to Batman. We cut over to the Batman piece of Park, where I guess Joker rec- recruited the people that used to work at the carnival or the the amusement park. I don't because like, there deranged- were signs. 
These are the about... range little the range little people. Yeah, well, there's deranged little people, but then there was on there's a sign that said uh, "fat woman" or "fat girl," and then you see her later too. Yeah, I guess he just yeah. went, went and found people that look like it because I got the impression that the amusement park was closed for a long right, time. Right, right. So maybe he just went and did that anyway. But yeah, we got deranged little people with like cattle prods put in like a collar on Jim Gordon as they strip him naked. There's a lot of uh, taking people's shirts off and stuff in this one too. Yeah, yeah. Clothes. Even the little deranged people are in like S and M gear, thigh high stockings. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like spikes, leather straps, and spikes. Yeah. yeah, it's very strange. So the little f- people drag Jim Gordon across the um, music park, past the corpse on the pink elephant. Hey, pink elephant. To the rest of the carnival crew, which is like, yeah, see. There's a, a lady, uh, Siamese twins lady. There's a, like, the, I can't think of what there's that a, was called. There's a teen wolf guy. Yeah. The, uh, there's Spock. The overweight lady. <laughs> yes. There's a, um, there's a maid lady holding a two-headed baby. Yeah. And so they they drag Gordon essentially to uh, Joker's throne, which is like a ride with with a staircase leading up to it with a bunch of discarded baby dolls. I hope. I hope they're baby dolls and not babies. Yeah. <laughs> because there are baby doll yeah. heads burning on either side of it, too, if you see it. Yeah, no, they're, they're baby dolls. Yeah, they're, they're not actual dolls. babies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, be, not to put it past the Joker, the, he literally once kidnapped the whole, like, where do they keep all the infants in the hospital? Uh, maternity yeah. ward. Yeah, he had, pretty much had a maternity ward full of infants and actually <laughs> had them all kidnapped and killed Gordon's wife as she tried to save them. So, See? So he killed Gordon's wife, too. He just looked like Gordon. That's yeah, but that was, in, that was in 2006, or no, 2001 or two, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So that was that's decades away from this story. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's a lot of dialogue. Let's yeah, just say that. Yeah, these next couple pages have a lot. So the gist of it is, the Joker said, is the, the, the thesis of his statement here is, any sane person will go in, can go insane if they have one bad day. And thus, everybody should just be insane, essentially. That justifies, it's pretty much justifying his own actions and everything. Right. That is the thesis of his statement. And that's what he's trying to accomplish here today. So he straps Gordon into a roller coaster with the deranged little people, and he's going on a little ride through Joker's little thing, and then we cut back to Joker's origin story here. One of his origin stories. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure. Oh, so we're in like a bar. Yeah, it's a bar as, girl. As a, like a detective and a cop walk in. And they're looking for the Joker to show a picture to his wife as he's talking to the guys he's about to do a job with. And these two come over to him and ask him to talk outside. And they inform him that his wife just died. There was an accident an accident involving a baby bottle heater? Yeah, she was trying it out. The baby's not even born yet, but she was testing a baby bottle heater. And there was an electric short and she died. And I guess I exploded it and killed her. Or electrocuted her. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. She's dead, regardless. Right. I mean, as far as we know, unless the joke, unless that crew hired people to tell him that, so it would make him crazy. No, I didn't get that impression. No, No, because he kind of falls apart and is about to screw up their job because of it. Oh, right, right. Yeah, he does. And this almost gets him to back out because he goes back in and says, my wife's, my wife's dead. I don't, and they're like, that's, we're sorry. We're still on. And he's like, no, I don't have any reason to do this anymore. And they're like, yeah, no, we're still doing this, or we're pretty much going to kill you. Yeah, we're going to kill you. Yeah, like, we're not asking you to do this. You're coming, and you're going to wear the red hood. The exact quote is, nobody backing out now remains healthy. No exception. Yep. So. Back to the present. Gordon's on the roller coaster, and the Joker sings a little song. Yeah, it's creepy. It's um yeah. pretty good technology for 80s, too, isn't it? It's got a big screen with a Joker dancing around. No, nah, I don't let say so. <laughs> you don't think like so? Disney. No. <laughs> it's just TV. It's also a little blurry, too, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, but it's like, it's it's one of those, uh, um, it's an amusement park, so it's like one of those rides with the big screens, you know, the yeah. presentations and stuff, so it's not that big a deal. 
And everyone's, you know, he's doing his little song. He does a little dance with his guys. And as the ride continues, he starts showing Gordon pictures of his naked daughter on the ground, shot and in pain. I didn't know if he was trying to say she was dead or if she was just, no, she's crying. So she's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I think it was more like embarrassing her yeah. on top of the fact that, like, she'll never walk again. And I'm posting these naked pictures all over the place. And, like, right. it's just an embarrassing thing. So, here, here's, here's one of my questions for you. So, some of the interpretations of this story allude that not only did he, like, strip her down and take uh, pictures of her, but he also raped her. I mean, he never says anything sexual about anybody. No. But I could also see him doing that just to make her, like, embarrassed, you know, just to... Right. Yeah. My only my only issue with that here is that I, it's a comic book, but time doesn't allow. Why wouldn't it? Like, well, basically, he, he took her clothes off, he took the pictures, and then they left. Like, we didn't I'm not see saying any of that. that it's impossible. We didn't see any of that. It's all yeah, I mean, they off. allude... They allude yeah. to it happening very quickly. Right, yeah, they, is they, what I'm saying. They allude to it to a possibility. I'm just, con- I'm just thinking, asking what you guys think it w- whether or not he would do that. I mean, he would do that, but <laughs> I mean, I, I here's the hard part for me is that you guys might have a different opinion. I never, like, I read this and I never ever would have thought that at all. I never thought, but it. the never Joker. Not at all. And the Joker that I know <laughs> wouldn't do that. You know what I He'd mean? Kill he might first. kill her, yeah. but yeah, he wouldn't do that. So, like, again, it's it's hard to say. When I read that, I would have never even... It never crossed my mind. That was... Right. In my right. personal opinion, that would never cross my mind. Okay. What do you I think? Just, I think the illusion is there. Like, I when I first re- read it, I, it's what I thought happened. Oh, okay. But mm. reflecting on it, I mean, not to say that Joker wouldn't do that or wouldn't no, ha- have right. sex. I mean, he's had hardly for how long, and of course, you know. True, true. <laughs> but I don't know. It just seems a little out of character for him. I, that's what I think, too. Because where's the joke in it? Right. At that point. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And see, again, for me, I don't have any of that experience with Harley. So, like, I don't – the Joker I know just – it's not there, you know what I mean? There's no sexualization of the Joker that I know so far. Right, I mean, the Joker's never been sexualized, really. No. He's always been played up as n- not interested right. in yeah. <laughs> anything I, but the joke. I mean, him and Harley will kiss and stuff, and he, you know, they, they, make, they say, like, comments and stuff like that, but you don't ever see anything like right. that. Right, there's like nothing that like that. Yeah. Mm, right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was just curious what your guys' opinion was on that. Like, that's an interpretation that people took away, and that's kind of what I thought happened at first. Right. Because, like, when I first read this, this it's just like the darkest Joker story ever told, and stuff like that. So you're thinking so, that already? Yeah. Please. So it's like, okay, so this is some bad shit happens into this. Right. So, but well, you had it pumped up, like whatever possibly bad could happen happened. That's what you ex- thought. Exactly. Yeah. So, but like. I just don't see the joke in, in that part of it, like, because he came with the camera. Right. You know right. what I mean? Pictures, it, yeah. 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 And, and that was kind of my thing. He was dressed like a tourist. Like, he took the pictures and he went. Is it, again, is it something that's possible? Absolutely. It is. Yeah. I just, in my mind, I wasn't. I, I don't think, think they gave you way. enough information to make you think that. I don't think that. Right. No. This felt yeah. very planned out for Joker, yeah. and it just... It seemed it seemed part of like part of the plan to me. So, all right, still the, still a bad, terrible thing paralyzing someone. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> uh, t- paralyze and then t- strip her naked and take pictures of her and humiliate. Yeah, yeah right. I mean it is absolutely horrible. Yeah. yeah. All right, and so as we see pictures of Barbara, Joker fin- finishes up his song, um, and then we cut over to Batman, who is practically beating people up to find out where Joker is. Yeah. Like, he beats Shoving up some... face into it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he's like... I mean, wh- this is happening while the, the Gordon's still going through the ride on the side here. But, like, he's, he beats up a guy. He goes to what I'm assuming is, like, a mob boss. Yeah. And we see a picture of the penguin. 
Yeah, he goes to the jail. He goes to the mob boss. He goes down into the streets. He's in the um, um, what I'm thinking is the subway. It looks like he's talking to like prostitutes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as he's doing that, he gets uh, he sees the bat signal, and he goes over to where Bullock <laughs> is, and Bullock hands him a ticket to the Bonus Brothers Carnival with compliments from the Joker. And Batman takes the ticket and and heads off back to uh the back to the Joker and Gordon. Gordon finishes rise. He's pulled off the thing, and the Joker is kind of thinks he's won here. He thinks he's broken Gordon. That he's, yeah, he gone, he's gone, made him nuts. He's gone mad. Yeah. And so we cut back to the last part of. Is it the last part of the origin? I can't get it. I think it is. Too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> last part of the origin, where they're going the going into this chemical. They bring out the helmet. They make Joker wear it. There's like. Two red, like glass holes. I think you see out it's not, of. It's not holes. It's um. It's like a two way red mirror. The whole thing's made out of it. But it, like where the eyes are, it looks like it's cut out a little bit. Right. Um. Also, you said Ace Chemical. It is Ace Chemical because it says it backwards in the puddle. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. And so that, but he can he can barely see Joker in his helmet. And right. so the guys are dragging him along, pushing him through as he leads them through and then there's, there's a security guard there and the guys are like it's like you told us there was no security and there's a, a gunfight happening as they run along they keep getting fired at and then the two go- one of the guy gets shot in the head he's straight murdered. through his head yeah that is a definite bloody shot there and the other guy is pinned down and he gets shot dead as the cops and stuff continue to shoot shoot at him and they think the Joker is the leader of the Red Hood gang so they're trying to take him out and then Batman shows up and says, stop shooting. We're going to do this my way from now on. <laughs> and he goes after he goes after Joker and everything, but the Joker jumps. Jumps what? Jumps into a pond next to the chemical plant? I thought they were inside, but I just realized they were outside. Yeah, I think it's a pond next to the chemical plant. Yeah. And he can't okay. figure out why there's something in the water that burns. That's it's It's weird. It's run, yeah. There's runoff from the chemical plant into right. there, and he's being burnt in essentially in the chemical plant. He drags himself to shore. He takes off the helmet, sees himself in the puddle, and and shows up with that cover that we didn't know it's where the it was cover, from. Yeah, yeah, that's where we figured out where it was from. It's from the flashback. And the Joker is born essentially. Yeah. Meanwhile, back in the present, the. Sideshow freaks are laughing at the sane man in the cage, which is the attraction Joker has, which is just yeah. bored and naked in a cage. <laughs> and he's like, he's just bragging. Yeah, he's just monologuing at this point. Yep. He's he's pretty much just doing that, waiting for Batman to show up. Who does? He shows up in his bat submarine, it looks like. It does kind of look like the bat submarine. <laughs> it's got like a round top on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing it's a Batmobile, but it, it, it definitely looks it like It also something. looks like if they made a toy out of it, there would be a button on the back that pushed and made that head shoot out like a battery. Shoot out or, yeah. or punch, yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. got that stupid bat head on the front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just not even a bat head. It's really weird looking. Anyway, so Batman shows up to the Joker, and then... He spawns out get- a little bit, too, by the way. He turns into spawn a little bit there. A little bit. This keeps moving around by itself, it looks like. But, like, as he's confronting the Joker, we get the opening, his open conversation happening in the background, as if, if this, like, was a movie, this would be a voiceover, Batman's voiceover as this was happening, Right, right, right. Just like the cartoon, when Batman's talking in his own head. Well, no, this isn't even that. This would be, like, they would take the dialogue from the scene with the jail cell earlier, and just Uh, put it over this. Yeah, I It's how I read it. Anyway. It makes sense. And, you know, Batman gets out of the car, he faces the Joker, and then he starts beating him up. <laughs> he tackles him, Joker sprays him with his acid, he chases him into a, a, the fun house, and, well, Joker runs into the fun house, and then Batman goes over to Gordon and, and frees him from the cage. And Gordon says, you need to take him down by the book. He wants him brought in properly. He's not insane. Right. And then Batman follows him into the fun house. <laughs> Where Joker's, uh, it's, is it just the Joker in there, or is it the, the creepy guys too? Because I only so I Joker think it's right just now. the Joker. I don't remember anybody else coming around during this. It's fight, just so. the mirrors look weird. Some with some of the things. So this story, yeah, is, his yeah. face is weird on it. 
During this monologue is where he tells you that that, that backstory might not even be his backstory. Because he says, uh, your girlfriend killed by the mob, maybe? Or her brother carved up by some mugger? And that's what makes you crazy. And then he says, um, something like that happened to me. You know, I'm not exactly sure what. It's sometimes, it was. Sometimes I remember it one way. Sometimes I remember it another. Yeah, so... Yeah, so- that's and I at first I thought he was story. at first I thought he was taunting Batman Batman when he started saying that like yeah. about like hey this is how you went crazy because your parents got killed in the right but he doesn't thing, know but that, like I don't think. He, well I don't I thought he did know that no Joker doesn't know Batman's backstory no he's asking him what mm. what made you do it what made it, what happened to you why yeah. aren't you laughing yeah mm. essentially yeah. Not only does uh, the Joker not know it, he actively doesn't want to know. Right. And so, for some reason, I thought the Joker was the one who did it. That's because it was in one of the movies. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. that's probably what it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the original Tim Burton Batman. The Joker did it. Yeah. Okay. But not in an actual ca- um, comic continuity. It was a guy no. named Joe Chill that did it. It was just some yeah. random act of violence that did, was what happened. I remember Joe Chill now when we covered that, so... All right, so Batman runs through the House of Mirrors as Joker's monologuing over and saying the stuff that you said, Uncle Chris. He almost falls into a a pit of spikes and climbs out of that, and as Joker continues, there's a lot of Joker monologuing, a lot of talking. Yeah, there is. He's got a microphone. Yeah. He's running around with a microphone. (laughs) And he's like, he he goes through all this monologue, and he's like, why can't you see the funny side of things? Why aren't you laughing at this? Right. And then Batman I mean, breaks through a mirror, grabs him by the uh, jacket, and throws him out. I guess a window. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out either because he's he's on the floor after that. So did he throw? I guess he well, it's him weird. Through a mirror. They're yeah, they're in a mirror house. So there's a chance it's not a window. There's a chance it's through a mirror. But it's it doesn't possible. look like he's going outside when he It goes does, but through. then he looks like he's on the floor inside. And yeah, no, they're still inside. In, yeah. They're still inside at this point. Yeah. Anyway, so Joker tries to hit him with the the needle with the Joker toxin. Batman kicks it out of the way. Then he grabs out of his mask and then hits him in the head with a two by four. <laughs> Joker hits him in the head. And then Joker pulls a knife, tries to stab him, but Batman blocks it and punches him in the stomach and then punches him through a door out into the rain. Joker pulls a gun and it's a prop gun. He's out of bullets. And he says, damn, it's empty. And he's like, all right, what are you waiting for? Let's end this, Batman. And this is like, and Batman's like, no, that's not going to happen. Right. He He's like, do you understand? I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to end up killing each other. Even though he just literally just ruined Barbara Gordon's life and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's again, it's just the two of them talking back and forth. And he's like, Batman's trying to convince him to, he's having the actual talk he wanted to have in the beginning right. with him now. And he's like, I don't, we don't have to do this. And Joker's like, no, it's too late for that. I'm me and you're you. And that's it. And we're in, it's pouring rain. And then the Joker tells, asks him if he wants to hear a joke. <laughs> and then he tells, he tells a joke. And the story ends with Batman la- laughing. And Is it Batman yeah, laughing? I was or- surprised. Batman, Batman laughs, laughs yeah. too. Batman yeah. laughing at the joke. Both Batman and Joker laughing at the joke. Batman grabbing the Joker, and then we just get we see here the ha 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 ha, and we see nothing but the puddles of rain at the end of here, and then it just ends on puddles of rain and them two laughing in the night, and I guess Batman dragging them off. So there was also another a bit of theory with this end scene. People think. Some people seem to interpret that Batman grabbed Joker's throat here and then strangled him to death. Oh, and killed him? And killed him. Oh, okay. So that's that was a theory, long-standing theory for a long time there, that he was killing the Joker here, and that's why it ended on the puddles and not showing oh. anything. I mean... I mean... So... It's a possibility, I guess. The only reason I would say no is that the Joker's feet are still on the ground in the third to the last panel. Yeah, I mean, also like they're the, standing toe to toe. Also, the fact that they made like a uh, story semi canon. <laughs> yeah. So and the Joker's still alive. So didn't but kill were him. They, he, was this not going to be canon? As far as I Is know, yeah, said? it wasn't supposed. It wasn't supposed to be canon. Oh, okay. It was supposed to be a side story, like the Di- Dark Knight Returns and stuff. But people right. loved it. But people people loved it, and they, you know, so they made aspects of it kind of at the very least and 
That's so, the end of the story. So here's the appearances. We got a lot of appearances in this one. There's a killing joke. Individuals. Batman. Barbara Gordon. James Gordon. Alfred Pennyworth. The Joker. Whoever Genie is, I'm not sure. I think that Danny, was supposed to be his wife. Joker's wife. Yeah, okay. Joker's, Danny, Genie's Joker's wife. Danny Weaver. Is that the bad guy that was with Joker? Maybe. I don't know that one. Yeah. N- n- maybe. Maybe that was the uh, amusement park guy selling. Oh, the one with the pink elephant. No, maybe not. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. It's just weird that it would be under antagonist. Yeah, and the weird part is you can't click that one. You can click every other name on there, but you can't click that one to figure out who it is either. So um, yeah, Then I'm we get a sure. Two-Face cameo. We got a Penguin cameo. We got a Red Hood in flashback only. And then we get the Joker's Carnival freaks. And then, that's not a nice word to say either, freaks. So then we got locations. Gotham City, including Arkham Asylum, Wayne Manor, Batcave, Ace Chemical Processing Plant. And then the items, it just says Joker Venom and a Batmobile for vehicles. Alrighty. So. Yeah, that was the killing joke. What did you guys think? I like the killing joke. It's not, it doesn't have as much in it as I expected. It's been years since I actually read it until now. And I expected, I thought the story was more full. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, yeah, I so I'm, I'm with on. you. It's just, just before you go into your opinion, Lump. So, like, this story is weird that way, because everybody seems to think there's more to it. When, like, right. like anybody I've talked to is like, there's, I thought there was more to the story than there was. But, right. like, every time I go back to read it, I'm like, oh, that's, that's it. That's all the story is. So, yeah, I get what you're talking about. Yeah, I, and again, uh, I, I, not that I didn't like it, and I think it's drawn perfect. But, I, again, I got to the end, and I'm like, no, there was something else that I remember in this. But apparently not. All right, what did you think? Your opinion's going to be the most interesting since you have no experience with this. Right. Yeah, so again, that's the reality for me. Is It was very chaotic. It's phenomenal, the drawing. I thought the story was great, to be honest. But yeah, at the end of it, I was like, oh, uh, right. no, nothing. So things happen and nothing happens. You know what I mean? It's just kind of a... I just assumed as this being a one of the most prolific Batman stories... When I was getting ready to read it, I thought things were going to happen. Like, this was going to be groundbreaking. And again, I thought that I loved it, honestly. I really did. I liked it a lot. But there's not, there's nothing really happens. Well, here's the thing. it's It was supposed to be a side story. Right. They didn't want too much to happen, I guess, because they weren't really going to use so, it. For so nothing was supposed to be, like, it's supposed to be a side story, not really canon. And it wasn't supposed to be in main continuity, so it kind of has to stand on its own. And it does. I, I liked it. I Honestly, I thought it was a really good read. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And, and I liked the little bit darker like thing, and the drawings of it were really well done, so I don't have any complaints about it, honestly. I just think when I was going into it, I was thinking something a little different. Yeah, it's a little more, it's a little hype, too hyped up, honestly. True, true. That's That's a good way to put it. It was just a little too hyped up for me. Yeah. When I read it. Like, I've never I've never had anybody who read this story tell me this is a garbage story. No, and it doesn't no one, no, And, like, the, it's like there's just, everyone's always just said, hey, there's, I just thought there would be a little more to it. Right. Yeah, it's exactly the way I feel. That's how I came away from it, so. Yeah, anyway, it's, but, uh, you know, it was a 100th episode. I, it's a good cover, so. And since it would not, it would not come up canonically for us because it technically doesn't exist in canon as a story it, it, right it's not in in continuity now, so, so if you're reading it like in order in canon and all of a sudden barbara gordon's paralyzed you don't know why if you didn't read the side story <laughs> well they mention it in different comics oh okay right yeah it's mentioned in a few see the problem is in 1980 between 1980 like, I want to say 85. Between 1985 and, like, 2012, there was, like, 40 Batman books. Sure. There's, like, and there was, different like... Different writers, different different artists, different everything. Yeah, different writers, different writers. Because yeah. not only was there, the, was there Batman, not only was there the deck of comics, but there was Batman... Gotham Knights, Batman, Shadow of Bat, Batman, The Legend of the Dark Knight. Uh, also, when you let some stranger just write a Batman story, you can't say it's going to be canon because you might not like what he's putting in there. Well, Alan Moore wasn't a stranger. He did Watchmen for them. Right, right. But he wasn't he was, the Batman. He was a, pro- he's a, he guy, was a right? prolific writer. No, I don't think he wrote for Batman. At the time, at least. And 
as far as canon wise. Right. I can look it up real quick. Eleanor Batman stories. Yeah, it looks like he worked on. Nah, he didn't. I think this is the only Batman story he worked on. Everything else was like he did a, a bunch of Swamp Thing stuff. Okay. He did a Justice League story. It looks like. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't really work. This was the only Batman story he worked mm-hmm. on. But yeah. yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah, worth a read. Yeah. Definitely worth a read. I I liked it a lot. So. All right. So uh, I guess what I guess I guess what that that is our 100th episode, and I guess we have to sit through one of Uncle Chris's stupid jokes. No, there's so. only there's only one way to, to to finish this one off. It's uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do it justice, but I'm gonna tell you the joke from this from the comic book. <laughs> See, there were two guys in a lunatic asylum, and one night they decide they don't want to live in the asylum anymore. I'm I'm paraphrasing here. They decide they're going to escape, so. They get up on the roof, and there, just across the narrow gap, they see rooftops on the town, stretching away in the moonlight, stretching away to freedom. Now, the first guy, he jumps right across, no problem, but his friend, his friend daren't make that leap, you see. You see, he's afraid of falling, so the first guy has an idea. He says, hey, I have my flashlight with me. I'll shine across the gap between the buildings, and you can walk along the beam and join me. And the second guy shakes his head, and he says, what do you think, I'm crazy? You'd turn it off when I was halfway across. Uh, 